if I was a hacker and I wanted to hack someone's password, what would I do? Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Only do this in a controlled lab environment. So we have this web server that we'd want to hack into. And then we know the username of the user, Marlin Spike, but we do not know the password. So we then have to hack the password, AKA crack the password, password cracking, or hash cracking, if you will, but that's for later. We have this web server and we could brute force guess the password. So like password, invalid password, please try again. Password one, two, three, invalid password, please try again. But that would be very tedious and it would most likely get flagged by uh, firewalls, EDRs, things of that nature. So instead of brute forcing and then alerting EDRs or firewalls or anything like that, we use John the Ripper password cracker. Yay. And as you can see here, John the Ripper, uh, more so of a command line utility to crack password hashes. But I hear you saying to yourself, Maddie, what's a hash? What is password hashing? Well, let me show you. So we have the web server and you know, on it, login, user, Marlin, password, this password, uh, let's say Marlin spike one, two, three, whatever. So to keep the password more secure, as in you just don't have plain text passwords on your web server because that's a horrendous security issue. We hash passwords. So then we hash the password, which then makes it harder to crack as it is a bunch of random letters and numbers, as you see here, which there's lots of math um, that goes into this, which I will not explain because I don't know and I can't explain it and it's not important really. So you hash the password. So this plain text password, Marlin Spike123 turns into this random sequence of letters and numbers. And there are different hashing algorithms. And this one is bcrypt, which is the like most used current password hashing algorithm. But you might have heard of other algorithms such as MD5, SHA-256, um, things like that. So just different algorithms to hash a password to obfuscate it, to make it harder to crack so it's not stored in plain text on your web server, because that's terrible. So we have the user, the login, they put in their password. The web server, it has a hash of the password stored on it. They're like, does this hash match? Does it not? If it does, boom, you get to log in. So it kind of just matches hash for hash instead of password to password, if that makes sense. It turns the password into a hash. So how does one hack a password? Well, we have these things called word lists. A word list, as you can see, is just a bunch of different passwords collected from the internet. Um, there's this infamous one called rocku.txt, which got a ton of passwords from a huge data breach um, back in, I think, 2009. Um, so like hundreds of thousands of passwords um, you can try against a login to see if it's the right password, which this is what we call a dictionary attack. Dictionary, words, I don't know, that's just how I remember it. So you have these passwords, they get turned into a hash via whatever hashing algorithm the login page, website, web server, whatever uses, and then it matches it against the hash stored on the server. So you could do password one, two, three, turns it into a hash. Does it match the password hash on the web server? No. Then you go to the next one. Does it match? And it goes on and on and on until one of them matches the password, you have a match, and then you get logged in. So 
you cannot decrypt a hash, quote unquote decrypt. You can't reverse a hash, but you can crack a password hash. So how does this theory come into practice? Let me show you. Onward to the command line. So we're on the web server right now because I know the password. I actually did a video hacking into this web server from another machine via its WordPress admin panel. So if you want to watch that, I'll link it somewhere in the description. But where we find these passwords is the shadow file in the Etsy directory. So here we have the user Marlin Spike, and this is Marlin Spike's hashed password. Usually you would get this hashed password by, you know, hacking into the web server remotely, which I did in the other video, um, but this is just for like demonstration purposes to see what passwords look like stored within like a Linux server. But this is what you would see if you remotely hacked into the server and looked at the shadow file in the Etsy directory and then you would find this hashed password for Marlin Spike. So how do we crack it? We have the hash. Let's crack it. John the Ripper. So we copy the hash into a text file. As you can see, uh, very small. But if we nano it, you see the uncracked hash in this text file. So we run John and then hash, which is the name of my text file. So the output. Loaded one password hash, SHA 512 crypt, crypt three, SHA 128, which is, you know, all the uh, hashing algorithms, and no password hashes left to crack. On a show hash, you can see the username Marlin Spike and password Marlin Spike. Also, I don't know why it didn't show like this screen of like the actual cracking, um, maybe because I've cracked it like in this video. Uh, but this is what it would look like if you cracked it, I guess, for the first time. Um, as you can see, the username Marlin Spike, password Marlin Spike. Uh, and then here we're showing the cracked hash Marlin Spike and Marlin Spike. So I guess that's what it would look like if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, I don't know why I didn't show it. Anyway, that's how you crack a password with John the Ripper. Cracking hashes is fun. It's cool. Should only be done in a controlled lab environment. Um, not on real stuff because you know we keep things legal and ethical around here but yeah that's just how you crack password hashes and what password hashes are so if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh subscribe punch all the buttons in the face per usual and i'll see you in the next video